Hassan, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and welcome to News in Focus. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Hassan, uh, today was the midterm uh, tax budget review and some of the politicians, particularly from the GNU, have given positive feedback on uh, the Minister of Finance uh, uh, budget for, for a midterm budget. Perhaps you just want to cover some uh, highlights of, of the budget, both the positive and negative side of it. Sure. You know, interesting thing, I think if if uh, if we didn't have a, a GNU and it was just an ANC government, I'm pretty sure the comments from the likes of John Stian Hazen and some of the other members would have been a lot more negative than what they had stated there. Because if you saw what the minister had presented today, has largely been in line as to what he had presented in his budget in February this year and what he had presented in October last year. So it's a, it's a continuing theme of trying to maintain some fiscal stability and trying to rein in expenditure and the like. The, the positive, I think the positive that's coming out of the budget is that they, they are focusing on, on a couple of key areas. Areas such as infrastructure is being highlighted. While they didn't talk a lot about maintenance of the current infrastructure that we have, and we, we realize it, I mean, we, whether it's in our suburbs and the different municipalities across the, the country, we're having challenges. They are talking about spending on infrastructure, new equipment, new assets and the like over the next few years. So I think there is a focus on that. They're realizing it's, a, it's an issue. And to try and drive economic growth, you need to have a bit more stable infrastructure as well. So I think they, they're trying to do that. Uh, I think this the second key area that, that that's, that's come in line, and it's, it's a big issue, is that expenditure, they are reining it in to some extent. Because if you look at excluding debt service costs, the budget is actually expected to be a surplus for the for the for the coming year. So what that means is our revenue collection versus what we are expending uh, spending on, excluding our debt. So what the revenue means, all the taxes, whether it's income tax, VAT, all those, those are all forms of taxes. The negative day is that SARS is expecting to have lower than expected revenues for the coming year. And that's, it's a, it's a variety of, of issues, whether it's fuel levy, remember because fuel prices has come off as well, you're finding that the, uh, also the fuel uh, revenue generation has come down a bit. And then VAT collections has come back a bit on the imported, uh, uh, items that's coming into the country. So there's a, couple of key things that has resulted in revenue collection expected to be lower. But on the expenditure side, they are reining in and they're trying to manage in terms of it. The one key risk on expenditure excluding debt is on the wage bill. The wage bill remains the biggest issue. Now, government had proposed that they were expecting around a three, three and a half percent type of increase for the year ahead, for this coming, for the negotiations that's taking place. And there is, we'll set the, the tone for the next two years or so. Unions, and you saw Kosatu was uh, was protesting uh, 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 what is called, uh, outside the venue of where the, the, the midterm budget was being, basically protesting and talking about, you know, better wage increases and, and all of those issues. Unions are talking about 12%. I think there's going to be some compromise, but I think government will probably settle around four and a half or somewhere around there. But the fact is higher than what they've expected. So that is still the challenge. To put up, it, I think it's good to always compare us in terms of our wage bill, the government wage bill, relative to other countries. If you look at other countries, I, I've just got the stat here that came out. Uh, it shows that our wage, general wage bill, in 2022, they compared it to countries across the world. Ours represented about 13.6% uh, as a percentage of GDP, our government wage bill, 13.6%. And what is the average international and the, average? And the international average, if you look at it, is 10.1%. 10, 10 so we're 3% above the average. 3.5% higher. That's a massive amount. The only other countries higher than us are, are, are really these uh, Nordic countries such as Iceland and Denmark. And they, because they have obviously a, very, a lot more social structure, but but there, there's the government, are, the, the employees are there, but they're a lot more efficient. They're giving value for money. And when you're paying your taxes there and you're paying, you know, we're paying one of the highest taxes in the world. But then the likes of Denmark and those places, 
they're getting fantastic pension. When you're unemployed, you get a you get a nice uh, you know uh, uh, monthly income for the time that you're unemployed till you get employment again. There's a lot of social benefits that are properly. And the standard place. of service delivery is much. Standard higher. of service delivery is much better. This is unfortunately not the case here. Government is looking at at an initiative over the next two years. They're going to try. You know, you would have known about it. This happened many years back. You know, where they they're looking at trying to encourage some of the employees to take early retirement. So over the next two years, there's an incentivization to try and encourage some early. They're budgeting about 11 billion rands over the next two years, where potentially a portion of the workforce will take early retirement. The the the, the result of that though is many of those won't be replaced. So it means longer term, the overall wage bill, those that go out, it naturally drops down. It naturally drops down. So that's a that's another way that they're going to try and looking at reducing. The so wage they bill. they've alluded to the fact that we have probably twenty percent more staff that we should be having. Correct, correct. So that for them the key issue is the wage bill and managing the wage until such time, economic growth improves now. Uh, Minister Gonwana talked about today only expected 1.1% GDP growth for this uh, February, March 2025, expected, which is lower than anticipated. I mean, not, not, it's, it's okay. And for the next three years, averaging around 1.7, 1.8%. It's still not, we need like a 3% type of growth rate to really start getting employment improvement and, and driving the economy. So I think there, there is expectations for some improvement but not at the levels where you'll see growth in employment, growth in revenue collection, and therefore then the improvement in terms of the debt. Now I come to one of the biggest issues, debt. Debt is expected to be this year, for the, for the, for the February uh, uh, 2025 year, is expected to be close to 75% of GDP. That's massive. To put into perspective, 15 years ago, our, 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 our debt was around 627 billion rands, which is a, was, was about 24% of GDP. For the 2025 year, 2026 year, government is expected debt to go to 6 trillion rands. That's a tenfold increase from 15 years back. And that's representing 75.5% of GDP. That's massive. Remember we talked a few weeks ago that every rand 20 cents is going. Minister Gorwana saying now for the next three years is that look like looking at 21 and 22 cents per rand going towards servicing debt. That's a massive amount still going towards debt servicing. And that is the biggest issue. Is our debt is our debt issues. Now, fortunately, I think he didn't talk about bailouts for any of the SOEs and, and the like, but he highlighted two key uh, institutions. Besides, obviously, the, you know, ESCOM is sort of slowly setting themselves and municipalities remain the biggest issue and they, they're trying to manage some of that. But the road accident fund, it's a nightmare of note, an absolute nightmare. Their liabilities are expected to increase. I think I must get the number, but like from about 450 or 60 billion, 450, 460 to over 500 billion rands over the next two to three years. And while road accident levies are expected to increase in that period also by about from 45 to 55, 60 billion, the liabilities are still increasing because of the challenges of this road accident. That is a big risk big risk to our budget and to the country also over the next few years, this Rose Accident Fund. And there has to be some solution to try and address this liability and, and we need to get this risk sort of reduced substantially over the next few years. And unfortunately, we don't have that. Uh, there was talk about the finance minister dealing with the financial commitment of the NHI uh, what did he mention? Because I know the in the GNU, some of the parties have are, are concerned about the NHI. Sure. I didn't pick up any major th th uh, indications. I think NHI, if there is anything to highlight in terms of key ex key uh, expected the uh, you know spending and, and the likes, 
it may come through in the February budget. But I think there's because there's so much behind the scenes, uh, you know, lobbying and the like taking place between the the the, the medical fraternity, the the hospital groups, the medical insurers, like the discoveries and the like, and government. I think there's still a lot of discussions and lobbying going on. I don't think they, they, there was any firm indication as to what the NHI, we can't afford it at this point in time. Unless we're going to be prepared to pay, uh, you know, uh, a bit more towards our taxes, uh, it's going to hurt in terms of the cost. The cost is going to be quite substantial. I think over time, there could be a working relationship and a potential solution between both the public and the private sector. So the medical aids and the hospital companies and the private companies working toward, with government towards a potential solution and where you could have a combination of maybe, you know, uh, uh, medical aid and also, but as it stands at this point in time, the costs are quite substantial and we just don't have the balance sheet and the, 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 the revenue collections and the like to sort of, service uh, uh, and, uh, and and envisage NHI. So I think NHI is going to still take some time to sort itself out and get to a, a, a sort of a proposal where they want to get to, but there is going to be steps made towards it. I think the, the, the current government, while the, with the, the partners within the GNU, like the, the DA and the like, are still very opposed and anti the proposal, right? the, the ANC is still strongly in favor of this. And I think the intention is to move towards a an NHI type solution in the future, but I don't see it uh, being rolled out uh, within the next year or two, uh, as as they as envisaged in the NHI legislation per se. Now, amidst all this, um, those who have invested in equity market, uh, those that have funds in the pension fund, um, they were obviously smiling because their returns have been phenomenal in the last 12 months. As you mentioned, the JSC is sitting at around 87,000 compared to about 65,000 last year this time. Now, that has actually picked up, you know, the investment returns by over 20%. There's also, you know, corruption, corruption is being dealt with, so obviously funds are being channeled into service delivery. And there's, a, a, you know, a buzz in economic activity. You mentioned, you know, the tourist industry is booming in the Western Cape, even in KwaZulu-Natal. There's lots of uh, foreign investments coming in. Uh, various hotel groups are coming to the various uh, cities. And uh, so the GNU past 100 days is, is giving a positive sentiment. Although you have the opposition coming in, and we have local government elections around the corner, prior to you coming in, we spoke to Naren Ganesh about how can municipalities improve service delivery? And there's a couple of options they're looking at. So in terms of the positive sentiment that's coming through to which you know the citizens are benefiting, um, do you see that continuing? Because a lot of people who have investments in their pension funds with the asset managers, and you are an asset manager, and you know how people's returns have increased. In fact, the value of the investments have increased. So people are smiling, unlike last year when it was negative. Your comments in that regard, Hassan. Sure. I think we've been we've had a really fantastic run in the South African equity market over the past year, more so during the last uh, last few months per se. I think the the renewed optimism in the country post the the GNU has played some part in that, but I think you've also seen South African companies have started to come through and, and deliver some decent results over the last uh, couple of months. Some of the retailers have come up with good results, whether it's the likes of uh, Mr. Price, Truitts, and the likes of the clothing retailers slowly have started. To, but even the food producers have been producing some fantastic results. The likes of AVI, you know, they produce baker's biscuits and those things. But we know it because majority of us have seen the cost of all those products increase substantially over the past year. Think about what we pay now for, uh, I mean, I, you know, I enjoy lemon creams. Go and see what you owe our uh, Romani creams. What you used to pay for uh, Romani creams 12 months ago and what you pay now, guaranteed at least a 20% increase. 20% increase in your brisket prices. Go and look what you used to pay for, uh, whether it's uh, uh, bread and the like. Bread not too long ago, 12 months back, you're paying for a loaf of white bread, you're paying around 14 rands, maybe 15. Now the average price is 18 rands. Again, big increases. So the food producers, 
they they stay they they push through a lot of price increases the retailers have pushed it through while they may have seen some tailback in terms of the, the cost but they're maintaining still the pricing now you you seen their margins have improved nicely for the, the food producers and in some of the the food retailers as well so with the result the company share prices have moved up very strongly so south african companies have also started to see very very strong i think the area where still some of the south african companies uh, and and companies on the jse are finding it tough is within the commodities and the mining space platinum is still under pressure gold has had a phenomenal run gold is hitting record highs on a on a on a weekly or daily basis 2750 dollars you know is and not too long ago it was 2000 dollars so it's moved up but it's obviously from a geopolitical perspective what's happening globally the war in the middle east so where there's uncertainty there's issues there's concern around risk and concern around the world people buy into gold not only individuals you have found that governments and reserve banks around the world have been stockpiling gold over the last 12 to 24 months because there's also concern around the stability and sustainability of the strength of the US dollar the US is just printing money they are printing and printing and their debt is also ballooning quite substantially and that remains a risk also for their country as well So would the result the likes of China India those many of these other big country J- Japan those they are buying gold and stockpiling gold as well as a means of uh, you know for their reserve banks and central banks as means of of, of security and st- strength for their respective currencies as well so gold is that but from a South African perspective iron ore has been weak platinum has been weak coal has been weak these are big exported products of our of our country so with the result those companies have faced a bit of pressure but by and large the south african ink they've had a very good the banks they are printing money at this point in time they're doing very well because you've had a, a high interest rate now while rates are coming off they have benefited as well so you are seeing that the i think the, the particularly the south african stock market over the year right you know it's probably about 25 27% increase over one year so it's been a, it's been a very good year so i think pension funds by and large those that are in most of your uh, defined contribution type of funds you've seen your funds moving up very nicely alhamdulillah so with the result that means your the sustainability of your pension fund longer term is even is, is fantastic so you know the always the always the risk remains like you know if you draw too much from your pension fund to to sustain your living and sustain your lifestyle uh sometimes you may draw too much and it you know come 10 15 years down the line you potentially could run out of money and it you, has happened do you see the trend continuing the upward movement of I think we've had a strong run I think for the for the current, level out. yeah I think it'll level out not, I think not decline drastically I don't I, highly I, unlikely I, yeah. unlikely to decline drastically I don't so think those unless investors unless, just hang on to your investments in that portfolio you are yes in, I think it's always good to have the balanced portfolio so not necessarily just pure balanced portfolios have a combination of equities a bit of property and also income so it gives you a you bit can of go stability. between a balanced or a defensive portfolio Correct. so that you got now i just want to throw a couple of curveballs sure. to you i met a few french visitors who came to south africa a few weeks ago and i was comparing prices with them relative to them we far cheaper for example the price of petrol in france is about 27 bucks a liter we are around 20 with, with the rand in, improving the price of bread is about 22 rand every commodity i compared was 20% more so we still uh, relatively reasonable in our pricing and uh, you take your biscuits you know sometimes the special offers mari is 2 for 30 so it's not too bad and we don't have a starvation problem in south africa because everybody is fed we got a good agricultural industry so we have to 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 thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he's blessed us but you know from an islamic perspective we get rain free of charge we get oxygen free of charge when you go to the hospital they charge your arm and a leg to give you oxygen water you want to buy it that uh, it costs 6 bucks or eight, or 7 bucks for 500 ml allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us as rain and uh, we just got to ensure that it's adequately uh, drained into the dams and and purified to come into our taps and then you take food we get it through our Uh, our agricultural industry you know you get your tomatoes potatoes etc 
you plant the seeds, Allah gives you all the various commodities. Allah is reminding the ummah that I give you this free, you're attaching prices to it, value it, make shukr, because when you close your eyes, that gold and that money and all is going to come to nothing. Uh, Nafiza will be dealing with your estate planning and she'll take one third away for the tax man, 10% away for the fees, and your family is, is left with limited amount. So you want those amals to bless you in the cover, utilize it properly. So I said, I know we're running out of time. We've got about 10 minutes left. We need to wrap up. I've got another uh, conference call to make just after 10. Your closing comments. Sure. I think there's a couple of key things. Just firstly, closing off in terms of the minister's budget. I think net-net it was a, is a neutral budget, in the, a midterm budget. Key things is there are some positives. There's some positive momentum coming towards the country. There has been progress being made in terms of the, the GNU, whether it's on the infrastructure side, I think on the SOE side, Minister uh, Baba Krisi, I think she's making good headway in terms of the on the transport area and trying to resolve some of the, the challenges being faced there. I think there is there is some positive momentum. And, you know, tourism, do not underestimate the potential that can have for this country. Cape Town is not only the, the, the main tourist destination. Currently, it is. Areas such as KZN, you know, we've got the Drakensberg, we've got the North Coast, the South Coast, Durban uh, Golden Mile itself. There's great opportunity to leverage that. And of that course, and the Durban Summer Silk from the 24th December 100%. to the 5th. What, you know, if you look at the, our December, January, the risk, you know, we, we've got such beautiful coastlines and the like, and we've got beautiful weather. We must have it. The risk still remains, you know, again, management of that. And again, recently I read there are yesterday, the day before, some of the beaches on the south coast, Toti and the like, were closed because of E. coli levels again went up. But fortunately, majority of the north beach and south beach and those places in Amshlanga. So in December, we're going to get our tourists coming so in. So if, if you have those things are there, our, the tourist numbers should come through and we should have a good December, a good January. And that again boosts employment. It improves, it boosts growth as well. So I think. Those are the positive. The negatives for us still remain expenditure and debt for this country. Those are key issues. Expenditure, we've got to manage the wage bill. Spend towards more productive and important things like infrastructure. Spending on, 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 uh, on those that are driving service for us and helping us, whether it's the police force, whether it's the healthcare workers, those, those are where you want to spend it because they, they create value and they help and they are productive to society. The debt is a challenge. And I think it's going to be a challenge still for the next few years until we get to a point where the economy is growing, our revenue is growing, and then it slowly helps to reduce our, our debt levels as well. So I think there, there, there's, there's a positive momentum going towards the end of the year and going towards next year as well. We must try and, and, and sort of leverage that and, and drive economic growth. And I think they, you are seeing both foreign investors and local investors seeing that, and there's going to be an increase and in, in, uh, in, uh, uh, sort of focus in terms of investing in this country over the next few years. 